this is the PG279Q from ASUS. It's one of their two top-end amazing gaming monitors and is really pretty awesome. It's a 27-inch 1440p display with G-Sync, 165Hz if you overclock it in the menu, which is pretty easy, and has an HDMI port this time, which is nice as you're able to connect your console or something like that, although the HDMI port does only run at 60Hz maximum. Now the menu uh, kind of buttons are actually really awesome and very easy to use with a sort of hat switch at the top, um, which very is, is very easy to navigate the menu, and uh, I'll show off the menu in a second, but um, yeah, it just, it's pretty cool. Now the back shows off the very aggressive gaming design as well as the ROG logo, and uh, to show off the sort of uh, height adjusting uh, general mo mobility of the stand, you've got 120 centimeters of height adjust, 20 degrees to minus five of tilt, and you've got a very good amount of rotation. Um, I believe it's around about 300-ish degrees, um, or around about 160 each way, give or take. Um, it is very much a, a kind of far flung thing. But um, yeah, you've also got uh, 90 degrees of rotation for uh, if you want to put it in portrait mode, which is really nice if you, you know, have literally thousands of pounds to spend on three or five of these. Um, that would just be insane. But um, anyway, uh, let's take a look at the kind of IO down the bottom. You've got this service port, which um, it says for service use only, so let's not bother with it. But you do have a two-port USB 3 hub, HDMI, and DisplayPort, which is quite nice. Um, obviously, DisplayPort will be the only one that works with G-Sync, but it's still nice to have. You've also got audio out and uh, the DC in from the power brick. It's basically just a 65-watt notebook adapter, which is quite interesting and means that if you ever did break the power supply or something like that, um, or lose it for some reason, you could very easily get a replacement. Also, just to note, in the stand, the base uh, ring and the RG logo lights up red in a kind of pulsating or breathing mode which is just very, very cool and looks awesome, especially in the dark when you're gaming. Now, this is an IPS panel, which is the big thing about how, you know, what, one of the reasons why this is more expensive than the last one, and also just pretty, you know, amazing in general. The viewing angles on this are literally 178 degrees either way. Like, I, I literally looked at it from almost perfectly flat on, um, and I even looked at it from the top, as you can see how I'm filming it here, and it does still work perfectly, the viewing angles are just fantastic, colour reproduction is beautiful, um, it's just a really uh, amazing monitor. Obviously the main downside is the price, as you will be spending many, many pounds or dollars or wherever else, but um, yeah, just to check out the menu, as you can see it's very easy to navigate with that hat switch, um, there's lots of different options, including overclocking, which is the kind of key one where you just leave it on, um, and you know, Overclocks at 165 hertz. The rear area has plenty of buttons for a fair CMOS, and you have three ports, you have two ports, a killer Wi Fi solution that is just awesome. Anyway, thanks for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you've got any questions or comments, feel free to leave those in the comments down below and like or dislike depending on what you felt. If you do feel like you didn't like the video, feel free to let me know why in the comments down below and subscribe for more awesome tech reviews, giveaways, and all that kind of stuff.